Welcome to Grappling with Insanity. This video is going to be fairly long, but it will cover a large number of areas regarding a standing and a kneeling gun. Pluses, minuses, the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. So stick around and thank you. Today we're going to do a specific kind of versus uh, a kneeling dummy versus a standing dummy. And what I'm going to kind of give you is maybe a little bit of a, of a review of both of them. Both of these are the Fave Yuki dummy. Now that's the only dummy I have right now. I have some other dummies, some canvas dummies, uh, homemade dummies. I practice on some of the other, other dummies that are out there at other people's places. Um, I sold some of my other canvas dummy, dummies and I'm primarily working right now with the Fave Yuki dummies. I do have a new canvas Fave Yuki dummy that I uh, got at the Christmas time. I have some new material. I think I'm going to be doing a video specifically on the different types of fills. Uh, primarily I like to use a fill that's, uh, that's coming from the heavy, the, my older heavy bags and it's just shredded up like clothes. So in this case, I have a couple other heavy bags I can use, but what I might do is just grab some of my old t-shirts, uh, rags, whatever, and just kind of cut them up like I've done before for other dummies. Just kind of shred them up a little bit, make it easier to stuff in the joints. And I'm gonna probably do a comparison of the different fills. I have some memory foam that came in. I have some bird seed. I don't think I'm gonna go the sand route. Uh, it's too messy. And right now, it's Wisconsin. If I was gonna do sand, I'd probably do it outside. It's snow up there. I'm not doing that. So the messiest thing I'm gonna probably get to is the bird seed. Uh, kind of concerned about the bird seed because any weight on some of these dummies, they're not meant uh, to have that kind of weight. What I'm concerned about is, are the seams, and I don't want to ruin my dummy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the canvas dummy uh, behind me. And I'm going to be giving you specs on all the, all the dummies that I have. Uh, I purchased the dummies and I at, requested the dummies at a six foot height. And so what I'll do is I'll try my best to measure the dummy out for you in the coming segments. All right. So let's go ahead and let's get to it. I'm going to explain a little bit about the dummies, give you a little bit of review of them. I've been working with this kneeling dummy for a while. So let's get to that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the, the kneeling dummy first. Um, I'm just going to kind of take off the gi here and show you how the gi comes on and off. It's fairly simple and actually uh, one aspect of the kneeling dummy is that these shoulders are not, they're only attached by this, this uh, synthetic leather strap. So it makes it a little bit easier to get them on and off and I'll show you that right now. This key is a little bit bigger, maybe like an A3. All right, grab the, grab the material here. You have kids, it's like dressing your, your toddlers and they're moving around on you. All right, so that's one arm out. Exciting stuff, huh? All right, top is off. Time for the pants. So, all right, that easy to take them off. About that easy to put them on. Right? So this is the kneeling, this is the kneeling dummy. If you go on their site, this one is what they're calling the alpha. Right? This is the alpha. This is supposed to be um, 70 inches or six foot. And a couple of things with this dummy is the legs do not straighten. 
So if you think you're going to be able to stand it up, um, you're not going to be able to. So one thing why I'm comparing the standing dummy, uh, standing dummy versus the kneeling dummy, because um, one of the main things is you can't do everything with one dummy, right? Now, what I hope to give you is an idea of maybe what your, your specific game is, what your game style is, what you're primarily working on, and maybe focus your energy to that type of dummy. Maybe a stand-up game, maybe a tap game, uh, you're looking at the standing dummy, straight legs. And if you're more maybe ground jujitsu and you're looking for something for maybe some tap, maybe for some um, bottom kind of game stuff, maybe your kneeling dummy is going to be more in line with what you're looking for. If you're looking for something that covers all of it, you're not going to find it in pretty much any of the dummies you get. You're going to get a dummy that is either standing and you're going to try to work your bottom game, your closed guard, Whatever, it's going to be challenging. And if you want to work some throws or you want to work, um, you know, takedowns where you're maybe doing some wrestling kind of techniques, uh, you're not, it's, going to be, it's going to be impossible with this one. I mean, you can set him up. His leg's going to be there, but it's, uh, it's not ideal. So let's go ahead and get into the, the, uh, the construction of the dummy. Right? Again, this is the, the uh, alpha. And it's a seven footer. So uh, putting the leg straight, I'd have to go ahead and give you the measurements. Let me uh, see if I can put my tape. All right, so I found my tape measure. And we'll go ahead and measure up the dummy from the side. Okay, right, so I'm just gonna pull some of this tape out. I'm gonna start kind of at the heel. I'm gonna put my tape there. Measure up the leg. Let me give you an approximate. I'm not going to break this down to a closest sixteenth of an inch. Thirty seconds here. Right. Shoulder. The arm crossed. And and at the very top, I'm getting six foot. Right. So this dummy. Approximately six foot. Right. Let's go ahead and measure the standing dummy. Dammy, the standing dummy is also supposed to be six foot. But I'm about five, ten, on a good day, five, ten and a half. And then you can see this dummy is already um, not as tall. So let's go ahead and put him on the ground. All right. Man down. We'll go ahead and measure this one head to toe. Alright, so we're measuring up in here. And I'm getting about five, about five, six. So where this dummy kind of loses a little bit is in this dummy. If I were to probably take off, you know, these four inches that are right here on this heel, and there's a little bit of a gap here in the space here, it's about an inch and a half or so gap. That's probably that's probably where the the dummy loses the the inches here. So this dummy is about five six. So if you're concerned, should I get the six footer? I get a lot of messages on my on my uh, YouTube channel, commentary or uh, on Facebook, uh, Instagram. People will ask, well, should I get the, what size should I get? Should I get the six foot? I'm five six, should I get the six foot? If you're gonna get the standing one, the standing one is five six, you know? And if you're gonna get the kneeling one, um, the kneeling one is six foot, but again, you're dealing with some bends in here. The torsos are, so if I were to measure from the torso, I'm just gonna kind of go from right about here. You know, we have about two and a half feet. The torso here is about two and a half feet. So, it's the same height here. It's the same height from the waist to here. I'm not including the, uh, the, 
the, the butt area and that thing in here. If I do that, it'd be the same. Again, where they lose it is probably in this foot area, right? So if you're, if you're wondering whether you should have a six foot dummy, a five foot dummy, a four foot dummy, I think where those measurements come into play, I think that's more along the lines like if you're an adult, go with the, the taller one. If you're a child, or if you're buying this for your child, then I'd probably go with you know either the five or the four, depending on where they are. Um, but I don't think I don't think if you're in a, if you're an adult, I don't think getting a smaller one is is really that important. You need to go ahead and get the large size. So the height out way. The next one I want to talk about was weight. Now the, these dummies come unfilled, so um, let me go ahead and. Uh, show you well I'll go ahead and point right, so let's go ahead and cover the weight of these dummies um, these dummies come unfilled so however much they weigh is going to depend on what you use as filler I think I showed before I'll, maybe I'll post you'll see it in here I'll post a, a link to my my filling of the dummy and you'll see a big huge pile of it looks like gray matter <laughs> It's just a big pile of gray clothes, shredded stuff like that. And that's again from inside a heavy bag. Uh, uh, this dummy here, I filled with parts of that. Some of it was with folded up clothes. You know, there's actually full pieces of clothes in here. In the legs in here, I put two, um, two five pound, two five pound bags. So there's 10 pounds in this leg and 10 pounds in this leg that come to about right about here on this dummy. So there's a bunch of clothes in the, in the, in the base here and the base here. Then there, what I did is I took uh, little baggies and then I wrapped them in duct tape and inside is either is rice. I didn't want to get in the sand, sand's too messy. And I'm concerned if they break open or something, which as much duct tape, duct tape that I put on there, I doubt that they will. And I'm not really kicking this. But uh, the idea was to give it a little bit of weight when I, when I go to do throws. Uh, that's primarily what I like to use this dummy for. And because um, whatever, and, well, and also the arms are a little bit firm. So I have a five, a five, a five, and a five, right? So it's a 20 pounds in the, in the lower portion. So picking this up and weighing it, I mean, it's a little heavy. Um, I haven't actually weighed it. Let me, let me weigh that for you. All right, so I've weighed both of these dummies. Um, this dummy here is about 60 pounds. So what I have in here is 60 pounds. And um, I'm thinking maybe I don't have, there are five, maybe all together. So maybe there's like 10 pounds in each, not 10 pounds, maybe it's 10 pounds all together. So it's either 10 or 20, but the whole dummy itself is 60 pounds. Now you can make that a little bit heavier, maybe by weighting you know, the torso here, maybe put a couple bags in here. Um, I really don't see much more benefit of a dummy over 90 pounds. Anything over like that, if you're like, uh, if you're 190 pounds and you think you're gonna make your dummy 190 pounds, it's kind of pointless because it's just dead weight and and it's, uh, it's not really as useful and you're not probably not gonna get uh, a lot of benefit out of doing uh, working with a dummy as heavy as that. So my recommendation, even if you were to go with a different dummy that's already filled, there's a couple of the century standing dummies that are 90 pounds. That's where my recommendation would be, would be 90 pounds, no more than that. Um, Cause you can move it around. You're gonna be picking it up, lifting, you know, throwing it, all that kind of stuff. The reps in there is gonna be enough. Again, you're working with dead weight, nothing, no help in here. This dummy I weighed, this dummy is about 45 pounds, uh, and this is just packed material. There's no, there's no sand or rice. There's nothing in it. It's just all. I've packed this one twice now, so I repacked it twice. And the difference between the weights um, and the packing of this one, this one comes with one opening, this one zipper, this one zipper. If I open this up, you'll see. There's like clothes in here and it's not even shredded, right? 
So this has one zipper, it covers everything. It covers the face, it covers the arms, it covers the legs. This dummy has seven openings. It has an opening in the back. The one opening in the back covers the head, the torso, the legs. Then there's a zipper separate for this foot, a zipper separate for that foot. There's a zipper separate for this arm, and one for the hand, and the same on the other side. All right? So, two, four, six, seven. Seven zippers. And the benefit of this is the hand is also attached by two straps for the kneeling dummy. So it allows you to do, if you're going to do wrist locks, um, you can do wrist locks, you can do some foot locks, you can do, it actually has some of a, somewhat of a heel on it. All right. So, compar comparing them, this one was fairly easy to fill, but because um, it's one zipper, but it is a zipper that's probably about, oh, I think it was, I think I measured this at like nine inches. It's a little smaller. This one ended up being maybe about the same size. Uh, what I suggest when you're filling these is to get some sort of, uh, you know, collie stick or a little bit bigger, um, something that's closed off that you can kind of ram down there. You don't want something too long, but something that's maybe about 24 inches or so. And that way you can help stuff it down, stuff it down to the very end. And again, if you take a look at my filling video, I believe uh, I have that on there too, where I'm packing it a little bit tighter. And again, after you use this for a month or so, you no, know, I use these probably four times a week. And sometimes I'm doing a Zoom, Zoom class. I'm using it maybe a fifth time, but for my own training, and I'm probably using these about four times a week. I come down here 30 minutes with the dummy, sometimes a technical, um, sometimes a technical drilling, sometimes performance drilling. So the difference between the two is the performance drilling is going to be more cardio based, uh, getting high reps, not worried about the actual technique too much, but kind of going through the motions and getting the feel. It's more technical drilling is going to be like. If I'm sitting there like, okay, I'm gonna, my, my arm's going to come up to the elbow, a little more visualization, a little slower, um, try to make sure things are secure. With the dummies, as far as durability, the material itself, uh, these are all synthetic leather. And the leather itself is pretty good. I can't see it really like tearing. I mean, I guess if there was something sharp, it might tear, you know. But it's, it's not like canvas. It's a, to me, it's better than the canvas, except for this one right here. This one, um, this is a pretty good canvas dummy. And when I fill it up, this is a heavy canvas versus some of the other canvas, uh, other dummies that I've gotten that are canvas. Um, the, uh, they're, they feel lighter. So this is a, a little bit more quality dummy, uh, canvas wise. Some of the things on here, as far as durability, uh, the leather, like I said, is, is very, it feels very durable. Some of, the, some of the issues that I do have with the dummies themselves are the stitching. It's single stitching in some of these areas that are really high stress. Like this is a high stress area. It bends, um, the arms are high stress here. Um, to me, it, this looks like it's just single stitching in here. And it kind of concerns me a little bit. Um, so I, I, I don't typically, I'm not typically going more than, you know, 50, 60% on these. And I'm definitely not cranking stuff, you know, I'm not, I'm not cranking these on, and there's no need, really, to get that kind of strength into it. Um, but if you do, you're going to rip something. And with this dummy over here, the arms are on by straps. Again, some of your weak areas that are going to happen are right at these, right where it's stitched to the arm. So I've heard people that, um, a person one of my comments said they, they bolt the arm. And I don't know how they do this, but they bolt the arm in here so, they don't, so the, the strap is not utilized. The problem with that is I like this I like the strap area. The velcro here is a little little rough, but again, if I put a rash guard or a shirt on him or he, I don't feel that as much. Again, you have these arms, these hands here that bend for wrist locks. You got a little come along here. You know, come along. Work your two on one, you got some wrist locks. This this dummy's arms are fixed, right? And I, I don't have them quite stiff, so they're just kind of sticking out like that. They move a little bit. Um, so, again, it's however you want to fill it. 
I kind of didn't keep it too tight because I wanted to move around a little bit, but I don't know if it really makes a difference whether they're super firm or super or, or loose like I have right here. All right. So durability wise, seams, the seams, again, I've already had to make a repair on this dummy here and I wasn't doing anything and it's right here. I, I had to make a, there's like four or five pieces coming in here, you know, that are all meeting at one spot. It's a weak, it's a really tough joint. And again, I don't, um, I don't, I think it's a really tough joint to, to do to begin with. And if you're going to do it right, um, again, I don't know, you know, if a, a different type of stitch right there would be a lot better for that. I, it just seems like it's just, it's, it's destined to, to tear in that area. And all that happened was, it came from was just me doing some neon belly transitions from, from here. You know, putting either coming across, and going across from here, moving it around, and eventually my knee popping up in here, uh, popping around, you know, coming through in here. This kind of stuff put a little bit too much stress in that, in that seam, and it busted the seams. The seams actually popped. All right, a little bit more on the durability. The durability of the arms. Again, a lot of people at first kind of complain about the arms being because they just keep continue to keep turning and turning. Now if they can continue to turn here like this, you can rip these at the seam. Um, but again, you know these things are, I don't know any of these that are really made that are really that uh, indestructible. So you gotta be a little careful with them. So there's some other areas that, as far as durability. The arms themselves, they're at a 90 degree, they don't straighten. Again, you're dealing with the straps in here, these might be a little bit, um, you know, if you're saying, you know, poor, fair, average, good, very good, I would put these, you know, around, these straps in here, maybe around the fair to, to average kind of area. I can see these kind of ripping off if, you know, if you're, if you're really, harsh with them and hard with them. Again, now I've had this, this dummy I've had, oh, we're seeing in January. I, I may have had this one three, four months now, maybe longer, maybe it's been five, four or five months. I've had this one longer when I know when they first started seeing them, I was like, well, let's give it a try. It's $130, I think I had a 10% discount. So when this one came, I filled it up right away and started working with it. And um, then I saw this one and I talked to the owner of the company or the baby company and, and they, uh, they sent me this one out. And so at any rate, the durability on this one, again, the leather is easy to clean. The seams are a little, um, they're not my favorite. Again, I'm not super hard on them. I'm not doing MMA. I'm not doing full out 100% ber berserker drilling conditioning kind of stuff like that. You know, I can do that without a dummy. I can get a, I can get a heavy bag and jump on that. Um, so at any rate, the durability in this one, the arms, legs, the feet, it's it's not bad. Again, the repairs they do on it was fairly simple. I'm not a big, I'm not a sewer. I don't know. I don't do any of that kind of stuff. But I was able to re repair that. And I think my steam is actually strong. Before I get into talking about the specific game styles and what these, what this dummy does well and what it doesn't do well, and what this dummy does well and it doesn't do well, before I get into that is you have to, if you're picking one of these, um, understanding your own game style. If you're a top player and you just kind of want to refine your techniques uh, on top, this, both these dummies will work fine for being on top, right? Both these dummies will work fine for being on top, if top on the ground. Now, if you want to do some, if you're into wrestling or judo, or uh, you want to work some self-defense stuff for throws, you can do more with this one than this one. Now, if you want to do throws on this one, you can. You're just going to be holding it up. So, you fill this up with 45 pounds, you're going to be holding 45, 45 pounds and throwing it. So this one, I also have some, like I think I have some 
poly sticks in here too to keep it standing up a little bit because it will bend over because uh, I don't have it super packed. So know your game when you're when you're picking this. And by watching this video, you kind of understand uh, what games are good in your game, your own game development. What you're typically good are your bottom guy. Do you like do you work more close guard? Um, are you bottom meaning underneath it? So do you want to work sweeps? Do you want to work submissions? Do you want to work transitions from the bottom? And are you working more jujitsu? If you're working more jujitsu on the ground kind of stuff, your kneeling dummy is going to be your the one you'd want to go with. If you want to do throws, if you're doing more wrestling, if you're doing judo, and maybe you're just a, a pure top guy, you throw them and then you get into side control, mount, um, maybe north south. This is your dummy, all right? This is a good one. If you want to work some closed guard, you can. But it's it's not um, not very helpful. So understand your game style. So let's get into the specific verses, the kneeling versus the standing, and your area of um, of your game style. Now a lot of people will debate how many positions there are in jujitsu, and it can depend on what your style of jiu-jitsu is. Are you more of a competitor, sport jiu-jitsu kind of person? Do you get into more of a self-defense kind of jiu-jitsu? Do you get into a, um, you know, a top and bottom? You know, you're, you're only saying there's only two positions, top and bottom. Some places will tell you there's, you know, five positions. They'll tell you there's, you know, guard, there's mount, there's back mount, there's side control, and then maybe there's north and south for knee and belly. Some will tell you there's six. Now, I kind of like to think jiu-jitsu is missing. Whenever you hear them describe, they'll say guard, mount, tactical mount, north, south, knee on belly, you know, side mount, rear, rear mount, back position, turtle guard. But you, sometimes you... You, you don't hear the the beginning position, and even in sport jiu-jitsu, even in self-defense, everything starts standing. So to me, standing is your first position. So I know a lot of times we start our, our sport and we get into it and we're working in the gym. Um, a lot of us just start on our knees because maybe you have limited space and you don't want to be throwing people. You're being courteous to your neighbors, your other training partners. Some of them are... Um, some of them were, you should start at least a couple matches. So we had a, a, um, an instructor in our gym, a black belt, a second degree black belt, whose recommendation was every time you're doing jiu-jitsu, a portion of your matches, if you have 10 matches for that day, a couple of those matches should start out standing, right? So find someone that you want to work a couple standing positions with. So start standing and then work to the ground. And then from there, if you want to do the remaining eight from your knees, great, start from your knees. But there should always be some matches starting standing. So I like to think, I've changed my idea on, on the number of positions I have. Standing is usually one. And from there, we get standing, we get the guard. From guard, you know, a lot of people were passing it and going into side control. Now side control will have a couple different names. Some will call them side mount. Um, and some of, yeah, some of just side mount, side control. Those are your two different ones I've heard before. I'm sure you maybe have some other ones. Uh, from there, a lot of people move into knee on belly. Some will call that a knee mount, right? Knee on belly, knee mount, whatever your school is preference is there. Then from there, you'll get into mount. Mount, I don't hear too many other things being called that. Maybe, maybe saddle uh, from catch wrestling. Um, but I'm not a catch wrestler, so I don't know all the terms from catch wrestling. I know they have different names for all that. Um, some schools will get into it where they, if the opponent turns on their side, like they're going to turn to their back, but they don't, they'll call that tactical mount. Now, that may be more in line with competition sports, like uh, competitive, where you're doing some sort of IBJJF kind of um, role where they get into, they roll on their side, tactical mount where they're on their side and you're still mounted on them, you're still straddling them. Then you'll have your back 
for back mount or rear mount or whatever else from the back, but it's you're on the back. Some schools will also have side control. Some schools will have scarf. Now, sometimes they'll, not side control, um, they'll have north-south eye position, uh, or, they'll have, uh, or they'll also have scarf. Scarf position, they'll run into a couple different terms where you, you'll either have your arm over the head, neck, and shoulders, or you'll have it underneath their, uh, their far arm holding their shoulder. And I'll run through some of those positions each one of these dummies works well for those two. So again, know your positions you want to work. And if you're really looking for, if you're a beginner, look at standing, look at guard, um, look at mount, look at side control, knee on belly. Uh, and then from there, if you want to work in you know, a scarf or you want to work in uh, back control, that's great. Some will even throw in I know Stephen Kesting uses in his kind of uh, journey, or he has a free document. If you look at it, he has six areas. And I believe it's guard, I believe it's mount, side control, I believe there's knee on belly, there's back control, and then he has something called turtle, all right? Now, if you go a little bit further back and you go into Adoro Tellus, he has a whole system that he calls turtle guard. Some people say there is no such thing as turtle guard. <laughs> um, I think he would beg to differ. Uh, I like to play a lot of turtle stuff, so I have some attacking stuff from turtle. This dummy will allow you to play offensive turtle and defensive turtle. I have some videos on my channel if you're interested in looking at those. Uh, this one here covers a lot more of the ground game than this one right here. This one will get you some ground game and some top game takedowns. Now, will it stand on its own? It won't stand on its own, but if you go into my channel again, I have some where I'm doing some double leg takedowns uh, and some single leg um, some single leg sweep kind of takedowns. Uh, it's I've used this for self-defense when I get into working some hip throws and um, that's pretty much it. It's usually just hip throws with this dummy. So, those are your positions. Know what your school you know, teaches you, what you need to know for either your rank or your belt or for self-defense. Um, maybe you don't even have to have an, a knowledge of those for your rank or whatever. Know what your, what your game development is. Know your positions. I'm going to run through those and tell you and show you the pro and cons, those positions on this one and then on this one. So we'll see that in the next one. And we're going to start with standing. All right, so we're gonna start with standing. And we'll start with the, the uh, standing dummy, obviously, because we know how that's gonna work out. So we have the standing dummy. If, you, if you're getting this one on the Fave Yuki site, this one is, this one is called the, the Charles, I believe. Charlie, Charles. And uh, again, he comes unpacked. So, and it's coming from Pakistan, so if you were to have a packed dummy, it was going to be a pretty expensive. If you want a standing dummy that's that's already filled, maybe 90 pounds, look at either the Century or I think it's Combat, Combat something. I'll put a I'll put a link down in the description for Amazon. It's 90 pounds, but this is um, this is the Charlie for Fave Yuki. And what I've done is I I packed him and put a couple uh, rattan rattan sticks inside the legs and close around it. So he stands up. Now, for a throw, you can start out in here. Again, he doesn't really stand on his own, he's gonna fall. But if I hook him up, what I do is I have a belt on him and I have a couple carabiners. And then I just hook it to, uh, I hook it to these, hanging up here. I hook it to these little straps in here and he stands. And then from here, I can do you know, double leg takedowns. If I'm just gonna, if I'm gonna be doing drilling, if I can get him up here, All right? All right. So if I'm 
gonna wear double leg takedowns. I'll, I'll, I'll set it up like this. And now he's standing. And now I'm just gonna get into drilling. So I'm gonna get in my position here. You know, I'm gonna take a step forward. I'm gonna lower my, change my level. Shoot in. Come to the side in here. And now you can step and dump. Come in here. Step off to the side. Shoot in. Single sweep. Okay. Now I'm not a wrestler, but I like to work those takedowns. You get a couple of those takedowns in here. Shoot down here and go under the arms. So other things you can do with this one. Again, it's standing. So I just usually just leave those on there. You're gonna get in here. You know, shoot up. You can go over the head. Step out in here, hip up. The hip throw there. Hip throw in here. Get the T position. Step in. Step around. Boom. That's your throwing. Again, if you want to do other, I don't do judo, but if you want to get into here, kick the leg, you can get into whatever you want in there. That's what a standing dummy does for you, for standing. The kneeling dummy for standing bit more of a challenge right so I could do some throws now these arms are really floppy they're gonna flap around it doesn't make a lot of sense right I could hook it up to here but the legs are gonna be dangling in the air on this one I can hook up and you want to work in RA rolls you can work in RA rolls this one here, not your best choice for standing. So our next thing we're gonna get into is guard. So we went from standing, and now let's go into guard. Now we're on the ground. So let's see where, where and what these dummies do on the ground, right? So a guard position, Again, you can attach the arms. There's Velcro on the sides here. You can attach them if you want. In here, either have them on the side in here or have them just have the elbows on the ground. From guard, you can actually take these legs and get it around you. So you're kind of in there. Open. This right now would be open because he can't. He's not going to cross his feet behind you. But what you can do is, and what I've done is, you can take a um, a long flexible uh, kind of resistant band and tie them in here. So when you get up and you go to do your stand-ups, you can have his legs on there and then you can work you know, guard breaks. So here, come across, staple the leg down, get in here, and you're gonna come out and around. So you can work some guard stuff with this guy. You know, you can get in the guard, you can at least do some drills when they have a gi on, trap the hand in here, step up, and if you put a, a resistance strap on in here, the legs will come up. Then you can pop it down, and then you can drive over. You know how, how are you going to drive it here? You can come over the side. So you can work your guard passes. Closed guard, open guard. Uh, open guard passes, you know, you can get in. You get into your Toriano pass, your feet are on your legs. Push them in, off the side, drill. You know, you can, you can get into leg drags. In here, switch around, in here, and then you come get that staple here. You can work that with this dummy. If that's your game, this is a good dummy for that. You wanna work, throw these out, leg drag, that's a great game. So you have your passing game and you have your guard game open and closed.
the kneeling dummy, perfect for that. <clears throat> Standing dummy, So with the standing dummy, pick the legs up, you can, right? And you can throw them aside and do those. So you can get a little bit of passing, you know? You can't simulate like you're pushing them into his body. <laughs> you can't do that because they're stiff and straight. But you can pick them up, throw them, and move to the side, get a little bit of passing. For working guards, not the easiest, right? He's like this, what are you gonna really do here? You can, I guess, work it, but it's, these aren't gonna bend as easily in the center with the torso. So you're gonna step, the legs are gonna come up, you know? Can it be done? Sure, you can do it. Is it, um, is it as helpful as the kneeling dummy? No, I think the kneeling dummy checks the box on the guard game. Open guard and close and passing. Again, you can get some passing on here. If that's not a big part of your game, your big part is to throw them. And when you throw them, you end up in side control or knee and belly or on their back. You know, we'll see when we get to those things how they, how they actually work out. So, guard game for the standing dude. No good. Our next position we'll get into is side control or side mount. So let's go to the kneeling dummy. Well, actually, let's go to the standing dummy. We had him in here already. So the standing dummy, Charles, Charlie, Chuck, side control. You have your different types of side control. You have one arm over. Create a little pillow in here. Pull him in. You got him in here. This hand facing up, this one's down. You kind of pull him in. This one seems like it creates a little bit more space, so you got this in here. Pull him in. Sure, side control. Both hands over. Yep, you can get that. You have both hands on, on the inside. Uh, it's a little more trickier. He's laying down, but you can't get your hand in here. You're preventing them from regarding in here. Um, side control. Sometimes people will say side control will also include scarf. So you have a couple different scarves in here. Scarf. One scarf is coming over the head. In, in this position, you see a lot of wrestling, catch wrestling. You saw, um, I think it was Josh Barnett beat uh, Dean Lister. You know, in this position. Josh Barnett a bit more. grabs his leg in here, grabs the other one, and just does this unbearable kind of crush, you know, you have in here. So you have a, that scarf, um, Keskatami, you know, you have this one, hands under the uh, shoulder here, you have the, the tricep here, and if you're doing it right, you can have your leg under your knee underneath them. And then this foot is your kickstand. So yeah, you can practice this position. You can even get into some of the, the submissions in here, but again, you want to be careful because a lot of pressure in here. You know, if you get an arm bar in here, you're gonna work. You're gonna work Americanas here. Maybe you're gonna work some elbows. Uh, nice thing about the the Fave Yuki is they have a raised face, and as you can see this, there's a little cut on the inside of this dummy where you can pack and fill these spaces. So there's extra padding in here. So if you really want. To, Work some MMA with this one. You know, this is maybe your thing. You're throwing punches in here. You know, or you're gonna work, you're gonna work that crucifix in a position. Boom, you're in here. Boom, boom, boom. Right, so you're working in here. Side control, side mount. So this one, the standing dummy works well for that. Again, it's a top game, top game. Packing with the standing dummy, you're going to see a lot of those still beneficial, right? Tap game for the kneeling dummy, you know, you can move the arms open. You can do a couple different things in here. 
if you're if you're working a jiu-jitsu game and you want to work on what this person is doing if they're playing their game right on the bottom they have a frame on your hip and maybe a frame across your face you can do that with this dummy right and here he's got his frames so if you want to clear a frame I, I like to teach on this one here as you have this in here I bite down with my chin then I kind of move into a, a bit of a scarf position and I'm going to move this hand in here pick that up and back now I put it in a bad position for him so I take take away the space and now his arm is on my hip and now I can go back right from here you can move this out and now you can work these Americanas a lot better if you get into that whole triple threat series the arm bar or the Kimura you get the Kimura in here and you can switch again your side control position on this dummy I think is is, is a little bit better a lot better than that one right there because you can you can work better submissions with this these arms again if you want to get into um, side, side control or scarf you know you, you have to move these around a little bit but here I'm in side control scarf right I can push this arm down step over again get in those same positions again he also has the built up face boom elbows now maybe I'm switching in here so this dummy I think I think they both rate good or they both rate at the good level for side control top but this one I think goes at, at um, slightly above that very good uh, it's a little tough to say because you're still working on these, these straps and I'm concerned with tearing these straps a little bit so I'm not going to give it a you know a five star for the side control but this one there's a lot more versatility in side control right so side control on this one I'm going to give to the kneeling dummy um, and the standing dummy is not bad Next position we'll get into is knee and belly. Let's start with, go ahead and start with the kneeling dummy. This one is called the Alpha. His nickname is Darkness. Um, both of them will take a gi, and I'll, maybe I'll go through that in a little bit. But um, knee and belly. So knee and belly, you got this hand up on here. You post in here, and you pop up. Knee and belly. Again, tap. Arms are down. You can pin your arms down with this one. Um, you can put your hands in here. You can switch. Hands in here. Switch. Move around. Come in that one. And the belly in here. Over. Over. Nice. Step up. Arm comes down. Mm. So you got drills in here, you pop up, step up, arm comes down, long step, back control, and belly. That's your kneeling dummy, right? Lots of good stuff from there. Standing dummy, knee and belly. Again, this is the top position. Knee and belly. Now, there's no legs in the way, because the legs are down, which you can get sloppy as you're going across. You're, at least you go like this. If you do that with the kneeling dummy, your legs are gonna run into his knees, which is more realistic, and then they're gonna probably put you in half guard, right? So if you get into here and you get sloppy, you can still cheat it with this one. All right? You can still cheat it with this one. Now the arms are up for the young belly. So if I'm going to do, you know, if he starts to turn in, you know, maybe I cut across, foot comes up, over. I got to step over the other leg. So, it still accomplishes 
um, this is a similar thing. Again, is it um, better than that one? It might be a horse apiece, right? Just because the arms are kind of floppy. But again, if your game is a tap game, you know, and you get to the ground, you do a little bit of knee and belly kind of stuff like that, that's not bad. My right? next position is going to be mount. Now, the last few positions we've gone through, they've all been top, and the, our opponent has been on their back. And then you can kind of see these kind of positions, they're fairly equal, right? You start to see a little bit difference when I go to the bottom or turtle stuff. So mount, maybe we're on the end belly, knee goes across, See, as my leg goes across and his knees are up, you're not gonna, you're gonna have bad partners who do this for real when you're training with them in the gym and they're just gonna have their legs flat like that. You're constantly gonna have to tell them, you're gonna put your legs up. You know, you're gonna be defending, you're gonna have your feet in here because if you wanna, if you wanna buck or uh, oomp, oompa, if you wanna do that, you can't do it that way. You gotta do it with your legs on the ground. So most likely your, your, your legs are gonna be like this. So when I go to, when I go to, go to the mount, I'm gonna drive my knee so it touches, and then my leg has to pop all the way over and slam down. Now I'm, now I'm in mount, right? And in here, choke. If it's Ezekiel, maybe you're gonna slide up into S mount. Sit so up in here, in here. Trap the arms. Arm bar. Um, that's your mount then. Your mount and your attacks for mount. I did one, did your S mount, I did your Ezekiel. So from this position, in this dummy, if you're working on that last move that Khabib did to, to Gaethje, you know, you're in here and you push this hand down, knee comes up and you pop over. Now you can get in that triangle. You know, you cut the angle in here. If you bait him to come up, now as he rolls, you push him up, you start him across, grab your leg, triangle. Standing dummy, roughly the same thing. A few of the submission options are gonna be a little out of your out of your game book. You can still do it. I mean mount. Again, if I'm in side control, pop up to knee on belly. I drive over, again, my, my windshield wiper, as it comes over my leg, my shin, it's unimpeded. There's nothing giving me anything kind of realistic. The legs are down. I get a, a lazy partner here, right? My knee goes down, and I'm in, in here. I can't get my feet underneath my, my partner in here, you know? Maybe if I reach down, put it under here, but I like to... I like to put my feet and close it underneath him, close the circle on him. But here, I gotta stay on my side, right? So, from here, again, you have your punches. Boom, you can do that if you want. For arm bars, his arms are pushed out. Now, if you come down like this, and you get a, a more self-defense, person maybe doesn't know what they're doing, and you've mounted them, and taken them down, you mounted them, and they're still, maybe they're throwing punches, and their arms are out like this, then maybe you're gonna do the very beginner helicopter arm bar. You get into here, and then you're gonna pop up, turn around, and arm bar. One thing you will notice, the arms on the standing dummy are pretty short, right? If I were to lay on the ground, this arm is coming out my chest, you know, his elbow is right here. Here's his elbow. You know, my arm is a lot longer than that. So it's, the arms aren't as realistic. The arms are a little bit better on the, on the kneeling dummy, honestly. So you're in here, he's pushing away, hand over hand, like you're doing the chest compression. In here, pop up. You can work that with this dummy, back and forth. Your drill's in here, over, over. Boom, over, boom. legs are here, back up. Can you get the uh, Khabib move? 
Eh, it's a little tricky because the arm is in the way, but you can push this down, head up, and get it. Right in here, cut your ankle, he rolls, right? Can you do it? Sure. Right? So again, I like, uh, I like the kneeling dummy for the groundwork. A little bias. But again, this one, the arms are a little more realist. I mean, more, more uh, similar. You know, here's the, the shoulder to the, the delt to the elbow. It's about right. And then my arm, my elbow to my wrist. That's about right. My hand, his hands are a little bit longer, bigger. So, so as far as mount, I'm, I'm gonna give it to the kneeling dummy. This one's still not bad. It's not like it's fair, it's probably average. This one's good. Our next position is gonna be back. Rear mount, um, back mount, wherever you wanna get in there. But before we get there, I'm gonna show you another position that some people will add into their number of positions. They say they have six or eight positions. Sometimes this position here, called the technical mount, is included. Sorry, this belt is uh, not being tied right. Right. So a technical mount is when they'll turn to their side. And as they go to turn their side, I'm going to pick up one of my legs. So if he's turning to my left or his right, I'm going to pick up the opposite foot. And now I'm going to be in this position here. Right. And, we're, and I'm going to move into here. So a technical mount, as he rolls, as he rolls in here, I'm going to pick up this foot, he rolls and goes in. So if he's rolling to his left or his right, I'm picking up my opposite leg. Right? So if I'm in here, before we get to the back position, a lot of times my opponent will go to roll to try to get out of this. So a lot of times they have a shrimp move, like they, they try to get out in here. And in order to do that, they got to get to their side. So as they roll to their side, sometimes I want to get to their back, and you can bait them into going into this. So we go into what's called a tactical mount. He's rolling to his right. I'm going to lift up the same leg on that side, which is my left, and allow him to roll in here. Now, I don't want him to come back to his back, so I'm going to take my right leg and create like a little pillow for him. I mean, here, you can get into this gift wrap position, right? And then we, from in here, we can sit and roll, you know, roll our leg out in here to get the back. So we call this your tactical mount, right? You're in this kind of position here, getting the arm bars. Uh, you push the face down, step over, do an arm bar from up in here. If, they, if you stay loose on them, they roll all the way over to their belly. And now we get into that turtle position, or on their, I mean the back mount. So the back mount on top, sure you can get in here. Again, a lot of times with the top back mount, I like to get my feet underneath his legs and it kind of puts him in a position where he doesn't have base and it's uncomfortable. So you'll know it if you've been against someone who does it to you. They wrap their legs and cross it underneath your hips and your legs are kind of not touching the mat. But in this position, you know, you're, you're striking, rear naked chokes come into play, right? I mean, here, this is, this is the, uh, this is a really ultimate position. Your, your goal is to get to the back uh, in most fights, most competitions. You spend a lot of time there. Um, there's not a lot they can do, and there's a lot you can do. You can strike, and you can submit, choke them out. So from in here, being on top and having the back mount is good. With this dummy being on the bottom here and having the back uh, is kind of realistic in a little way because sometimes you get a person who will push back into you, try to push their head under your chin to make it uncomfortable. You know? Again, we're not crossing our feet here unless we're high up, uh, up here so they can't they can't take their leg and put it up and get a foot lock on us. If your legs are crossed, you don't want to be below, like in their, below the groin area. 
because they can just take their leg and flip it over and give you a foot lock. But in here, I have uh, the uh, back position with the seatbelt Camaro grip. You can just get into here where you have the back to get off the side. Get back. It's a little more tricky because his legs are stiff. A lot of times they won't be like this. But yeah, you can still work back stuff in here. And you can still push off in the arm bars. All right, so that's your your top back and your bottom back. Again, the top back wasn't bad. Let's see that with this dummy. Here we are with the uh, the uh, technical technical mount with this one. So over in here, they decide they're going to get to the side. You have to you have to move these arms a little bit so they're not in the way. And they cross their arms. They go to go to my left to their right. I pick up my leg, and he comes behind them. And then what I try to do is I sit back on my on my leg. I don't want to stay up too high. All right, I want to lower my base. Get in here, get this, get this Camaro lock on it. This Camaro lock in here, or you can come all the way under and get this gift wrap. Now from in here, you know it's it's easy to bring this leg over. Get the arm bar. You know if you want to get in this position and roll them, they continue to roll. They go to their, they go to their stomach. Now here. His, his knees are in the way, so you're going to get more of their back, and you're going to get your you can get your hooks in. But you do want to be up this high, so you're going to want to scoot back, and get low. But because he doesn't have he doesn't have uh, the shoulder structure, he's face planting right into the ground. So it's going to be a little trickier to get that 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 uh, rear naked choke. But I have you know you can get your hooks in in here. If you're up high, all you're going to do is just Take your hands in here, scoot back. All right, I have a back top. I can roll. Again, his legs are in, are where they typically would be. Again, I'm not crossing in here. If I'm gonna cross, I'm gonna be above his waist. All right, so he can't foot lock me. In here, I can keep my knees pinched. I have his back, rear naked chokes. In here, I'm on the, this is the overhook side, overhooking his head here. You can get in here where you're under his arm, under hook, get him off the side a little bit. Now we're in this position. I have the underhook here, great for arm bars. So, I think <clears throat> this dummy for the on your back um, back mount, getting into like a back control system. If you're using Denner stuff, if you're using Matt Darcy's on your Maiden series, I've used this dummy for that. Matt Darcy um, has a series on Jiu Jitsu called the Iron Maiden. This dummy worked well for that. This dummy is going to be a little trickier uh, to work that bottom on the, on the ground kind of get getting that uh, back control from there. But that one will work nicely for top back. So if you're working MMA style where they turn on you and you're punching, you can work that. Again, you're not going to have a total proper one where maybe they're trying to build up a, the base. Uh, the Gracie's like to say, uh, you know, building up a house. They build their house and get up, stand up. So again, that's your back control. Back control, back mount, um, rear mount, rear control, all those. So if I'm rating it, uh, they kind of split the difference. That one, this one's a little bit better for the top back. This one's a little bit better for the bottom. Another area to add in there in the guard game was to go ahead and mention the, uh, the other part of the guard game, which is not just inside their guard, but your guard game, your bottom guard game. 
your bottom guard game with the kneeling dummy is going to be a little more a little more realistic to use with the kneeling dummy right I have some videos again with guard stuff but in here <laughs> you can work work from closed guard in here you can work you can work from lasso guard you know you can work from spider guard you know if you want to work which in here work spider guard you can you want to work triangles boom triangle and work arm bars boom arm bars <clears throat> you got a gee on him sweeps right this one allows you to work a bottom game guard different variations of guard again I have lasso stuff I have Kimura game I have you know you can work you can work um, all kinds of things from this position right here this is your closed guard this is another position that you're running into so open guards you can work two on one in here you can work your right to the back here so that is the kneeling dummy in my closed guard bottom right so let's go ahead and put him right here let's go ahead and bring this guy in put a gi on him so to put him in my closed guard here's what it looks like I have to hold him up right again you can work stuff in here you know if I want to push pull push pull the arm pop my legs up now I gotta work around these arms triangle oh, to get him back into my guard and here trap the arm arm bar slide this leg up boom arm bar this is a bit of a more of a of a core workout because he's laying on top of you sweeps if I have a guillon collar and sleeve shrimp out knee across sure can you do it sure it's a little harder the other position I want to get into that I like to work a lot is turtle position right I'm gonna show you with the the alpha you can get the arms in this position the turtle is going to be on all fours right position the arms you can get you can open up the legs a little bit and that's your turtle position this position will happen if say they shoot in on me they're going to do a double leg takedown and I sprawl on them right and here my legs are out my chest is out and then from here you know you're gonna cross face scoot to the back and now I'm gonna work my my attacking the turtle positions all right I have things where I staple, take my leg, staple this leg down, this leg comes up. You know, you may have a position here where you have a tail. Um, you have this arm in here. You can flip them up. Come in front arm bar. It works better when they have a gi. But you can work something like that in turtle position for submission. And actually, I just have a new video attacking the turtle where I get into some attacks. But um, that arm bar one's pretty nice. You know, if you can do the old ball and chain, you can grab an arm here. But a lot of times this works is if they have a key top on. You can grab a tail or a belt, whatever. And here, this hand is on the inside. And here, I'm trapping that, this leg, stapling that leg down. This hand comes in and grabs a wrist. And then what happens is I pop up both feet. I'm holding on a belt or a tail, 
and I pick him up, flip him over, and now I have the arm here, get in here and fall back for an arm bar. You can do that with this done. <clears throat> you can do you can do rolling back takes. You know, you get into here, position. A lot of times you pop up, pop this arm up, you, you, you hop up, come over, and now I have his back. That's off the turtle position, right? You can work it where you're in here, you have them stapled down, they decide they're going to regard. It's a little trickier because the legs are stiff, but a regard is they kind of go into this tornado roll. Right? You gotta be careful in here, you don't want to rip the seam. So you catch the leg here, knee goes over, grab the head, long step, side control. This dummy is great for working some turtle stuff. Again, you have to do a little bit of the visualization because he's sewn into a specific position in here that doesn't allow you to really open them up like a real person. Like, he can't get super wide this way. Turtle position with this guy. <clears throat> Not gonna happen. He doesn't, he doesn't get there. Um, but, not all is lost. If, maybe you have a med ball, Tight under his belly. And now you can work some turtle guard. Or some turtle, not turtle guard, but turtle position, right? Again, I can't staple down, but I can get in these controlling positions. I can work a hand in here. If he has a gi on, I can work on, you know, doing a clock choke. And here, and walk, boom, boom. I can get that. I can work sprawls. Come in here, in here, back position. Here, here, over, boom, boom, boom. You can still work stuff, all right? So don't get me wrong, with a little uh, necessity is the mother of all inventions, right? So if you really want to work that turtle position, find a medicine ball. Find a, find a foot ottoman. Find a plyometric ball. Find something. Find another another dummy <laughs> or heavy bag or something to put it underneath. Let's go ahead and wrap this up and I'll kind of give you my final breakdown. Again, if you want to be more, more grappling and less takedowns, less striking, I'd probably go with the kneeling one. If your goal is to do more takedowns, have other options of maybe, um, you know, picking him up, putting hanging him up there, and if your arms are firmer, you know, you can pop out here, pop, boom, put a pop, boom, knee. You know, if you want to work stuff like that, this dummy might be where you know where where it's at. A little more versatility. I even have some dummies where I take and put the glove on, and put a stick in his hand. You could work stick stuff with him. You can't do it with him. So you might be able to co cover other areas, other martial art areas with this dummy standing up one. Especially if you make these arms a little stiffer. Uh, this one, I think it's just kind of grappling. Right? I have both, so I can cover all those. Now, if you're only going to get one of these, you have to decide, are you more grappling or are you going to do more uh, other kinds of martial arts? Striking, wrestling, throws, some grappling. This one covers a lot of good bases. So if you're asking me what I would tell you to get, I would just say, are you more grappling or do you have other areas that you're interested in? Kickboxing, uh, judo, wrestling. Trapping, um, Pentukin, all that, I'd go with this one.
the standing one. More options, right? When you're trying to make a decision, trying to earn, uh, trying to spend your hard-earned cash, both these dummies are the same price. They're about $130, $134. If you use grappling with, grappling with, and put it down in the description what it is, grappling with, you'll get a 10% discount on these dummies. Now it's not much, but it's something, right? And if you're spending some hard earned cash on the dummy, um, you can save a little bit with that grappling with. All one word. I want to finish up by putting a gi on the standing dummy so you can see that. You've already seen a gi on the, the kneeling dummy, but I'll put a, go ahead and put a gi on the, the standing dummy. And as I'm doing that, maybe I'll discuss a little bit uh, of the pros and cons of buying these dummies because they're not filled. Um, so let's go ahead and put this on and I'll kind of talk through the, um, the idea I was thinking about when I buy these dummies and they're not filled. So some of the, the ideas of buying a dummy not filled is it saves on shipping costs. If you purchase a dummy that's filled, a lot of times those dummies end up costing more. And then there's also the, the cost of, uh, of the shipping cost. So like the, the dummies that come from either Century or the Combat, whatever, th those dummies are still probably you know close to 200 some dollars or so being filled. They're professionally filled, so they're gonna they're going to be nice, no doubt, but it's going to cost you extra in shipping, too. So not only does it cost you more to have filled professionally, but it's going to cost you more in the shipping department. And I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but I'm sure if you go onto Amazon and look at their, their um, the cost, it'll tell you right there. Right? So I have the pants on. I'm not going to run through all. Well, let's go ahead and run through all these. Another thing with getting these dummies unfilled is you can decide how you want to fill this dummy. Now if you go on and do a search for filling grappling dummies, you probably see a couple different ones out there and I've done it. Um, you'll see a couple guys or a guy who is using like flexible, flexible uh, fiberglass kind of poles in there to give a little rigidity into the arms. He'll use one piece kind of bend it so these arms move at one piece. So he can give a little bit more realistic when he's doing uh, Americanas or Kimuras or something in there. You'll see them put pool noodles inside and then fill it with clothes. It gets a little more tricky doing stuff like that because you have to work, you have to pack clothes around something in there that's taking up space. When you do something like that, it also takes away from the ability to um, add more weight because the pool noodle is gonna take up space from actually packing. Now, if you take your pool noodle, there's another person out there who's taking pool noodles and he's duct taping one end, putting sand inside the pool noodle, giving it a little, a little weight, duct taping the other end, and then going ahead and putting it in his dummy you could do that too. Again, getting these dummies unfilled allows you to customize it and again, be uh, uh, the necessity is the mother of, uh, of inventions, right? So um, you can figure out a number of different ways that are perfect for you. You can also figure out, save money on fill. So you might be able to, maybe you have a couple old heavy bags. Now you can go on to, um, you can go onto the marketplace on Facebook and type in heavy bags. And right now during the pandemic, a lot, of, a lot of people are gouging prices. But if you go on, and sometimes you can find locally people that are willing to sell you their heavy bags, their used ones that are beat to all tar or whatever, maybe they're just looking to get like 50 bucks for them. Well, that's pretty good because this is going to be a little tough. Now this, again, I'm just going to pause there for a second that, um, in my story. But putting this gi on this dummy is a little more trickier because the arms don't bend around. And they're shorter. You'll see it here. Once I get it on. It's going to be bunched up. 
right. Again, this is an A3. An A3, I believe. Yeah, it's an A3 gi. This is a game, this gi. And you'll have to roll the cuffs up if you want. You know, you're cheating already, getting that little pocket grip. And here, now you have, have them standing up in here. You have them against the gi. Pull them here. You know, now you can spin around, drop, turn. Now you have a gi on them, you can do even more throws. Right? You have them, you have them in here. You get these sleeves. You throw. 